right, so we've, uh, I think we've taken a look at the most uh, uh, important new features that UConn offers um, as far as uh, you know, the soft keys go and uh, navigating through your tracks in a much more elegant fashion than ever before. But we haven't really touched base on how the Surface now controls the mixing. Um, channel strip and the mixer in Pro Tools. Um, there's a lot of new updates there that as we're working through this mix just make it a lot easier to um, get what needs to be done done. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. I have my bass track selected on the control right now and the control does allow you to access the whole mixing channel strip um, right away but it has a kind of a focus channel idea. So you have to first select the track in Pro Tools to control anything in the channel strip. So I have, once I do that, then these eight knobs become the whole channel strip. So I see inserts on this knob, I see the input routing for that track on this knob. There's their dynamics and EQ, quick way to get to a dynamics or an EQ plugin. I have the sends here on this knob. I have panning, I have the group information, and then the mix is the output routing. And so the whole channel strip is right there at your fingertips. So if I say wanted to pull up a plugin for this bass track, I would select the inserts knob. I would see that the A slot is open, but the B slot has a make DSP plugin on it. And then we have an EQ here. Let's go ahead and actually pull that EQ up. There it is and it actually pops up and then we have multiple controls. Now this is a good chance to show you guys a couple of new things. First off, notice how as I adjust two parameters here simultaneously that I'm able to get what I need happening. Grab two knobs and they both move. Now obviously this seems that it should always have done this but under the Huey protocol I could grab two knobs all day long but only one of them would move at a time. Now another interesting thing that Huey did, it only allowed us to use half of the knobs per parameter page for plugins. So if I pulled this plugin up under Huey mode, I would only see parameters for that plugin on the right knobs and the left knobs would be blank. Once again, another limitation of Huey that uh, luckily we don't have to worry about anymore. So all eight knobs are now instantly mapped to this plugin and we can start controlling it. Very cool. Now if I hit this back button, Close the button and then we're good to go. Now, I actually want to hone in on Rochelle's vocal a little bit today. Let's go ahead and play that back. All right, we got another phrase coming up, so let's go ahead and solo her out just for a second. So this is through an M149. Get a little bleed. Some drums in there because they did this live. Really nice input recording already. So this is through an M149, through an SSL 4000 preamp, and then converted with one of the new Avid HDIOs. So it already sounds great, but let's go ahead and add a couple of plugins to it because we like to process stuff. Uh, and to do that, we're gonna actually um, use the, the mix. So unlike the control, the mix, you do not have to first select a track to say, pan it. Notice, I could go ahead and select actually this guitar track, but still be able to pan my vocal track, no problem. All it has to do is show up on the surface and then you're able to do it. Now, remember these five buttons here are basically telling the knobs what to do. So if I wanted to add a plugin to this vocal track that I just showed you, select it, look at inserts, and now I'm gonna hit both of these page buttons at the same time. Now, we used to be able to add a plug-in and get this far under Huey mode too, but the difference was that once I entered configure mode on the control surface, I would then see a knob dedicated to the A insert slot, the B insert slot, the C, and so on and so forth. And I would have to use that one knob to scroll through every single plug-in I had installed on my computer. It would all show up in this little display here. And so all the folders of what type of plugin it is or what manufacturer the plugin is, all that stuff went away. And unfortunately, it made it really hard to try to find the plugin you wanted to use, press the knob down when you did find it to actually instantiate it on that track. And the way we do it in Yukon is, is definitely uh, more elegant 
and easier to use because motor memory kind of takes over. Uh, I'm in configure mode and so now I can select the knob dedicated to the A slot and what do I see? Well, I see that first level of folders just like I would see if I was doing this with my mouse. I see no insert, TDM plugins, RTAS plugins, I.O. Those are the same exact folders I see when I click on an insert slot with my mouse. All right? So if I can select an RTAS plugin, for instance, and we'll say the Dynamics plugins, all right? and then we'll go ahead and pull up this 6030, which is a great new Make DSP plugin. Now it's on the track, exit configure mode, and it brings me back to the inserts page for that track that I have selected. So I can now go ahead and press the knob one time, and it should pull up our new this new MIC DSP compressor, which is actually really cool, as it gives us a good chance to play with it a little bit. Before I do that, we'll go ahead and uh, loop this vocal. Let's go ahead and press play. So, if I wanted to take a look at that again, let's go ahead and pull up that 6030 compressor. There we go. And now I can actually just scroll through the different emulators. So MCDSP, they got a couple of new algorithms that they came up with. They got a lot of great classic algorithms that, uh, like an 1176, or even here's a Fairchild emulator. It's a really versatile compressor. I'm going to put it on over easy here. And then we'll adjust the threshold. We don't want too much gain reduction. And I actually loop this phrase in the vocal where she has some decent peak, transient. So we'll go ahead and just smooth that out. It's a good one to kind of set the compressor. As we turn the ratio up, we'll see the gain reduction. And her loudest part, she's at about a three, three uh, dB of gain reduction. So I think that's not bad. Maybe we can turn the output up a hair. And I'm not sure she needs much else than that. So we'll go ahead and close that plug in and listen to it in the track. So, as you can see, we can really easily get to plugins, bus sends, uh, virtual instruments, and automatically start controlling them um, from the control surface.